one of the first <coughs> operators we're going to be working with is the momentum operator. So we've met the Hamiltonian, which again, we have to have a specific system before we can define it in general or in specific. We've met that our position operator is just the position variable, that one's easy. Now we have the momentum operator. So this is where you don't necessarily have an idea from classical mechanics of, of what this should be. So it's going to be negative IH bar and then derivative with respect to position. So it's not necessarily a matrix, right? This is just a function, but it has to apply to something because it's a derivative. So this operator isn't a thing in itself that you can really grab and understand. You have to apply this operator to something else. So let's take a situation that we might work with an operator. What is one? Expectation value. So I might want my expectation value of my momentum operator. You always have to have a specific state. And right now we don't necessarily have a specific state, so I'll just write this out initially. So we've said that when you have the expectation value of an operator in the position basis, that's going to become your integral. So we have an integral from negative infinity to infinity. And now I have psi star of position. Remember that that psi bra is going to become complex conjugate of your function. Now I have my operator. Again, the first few times you do this, don't skip any steps at all. I'm literally writing it here, and the order matters now, so be careful. We, we know with matrices, you can't just swap the order, whatever you want. Same here, keep the order initially. So now I have psi of x, and then this is dx. So what can we do with this? We can do a little bit. So ih bar, these are scalar values. They can come out front. I'll bring the negative with it. So ih bar is now outside in front of our integral. And I still have my then complex conjugate function. And now what do I do with this derivative? The derivative acts to its right. So I now have d of psi x dx. And now, be careful. Don't start to say, hey, look, these cancel. Be careful. You're going to have some sort of functional form for what psi of x is. So first, take this derivative, right? Figure out what the functional form is. Then you're going to multiply it with this. So you get this new thing on the inside, which is the complex conjugate of your function multiplied by the derivative of your function. And then you integrate it. So don't just cancel these. That's, that's not going to be a good approach here. So we actually have to have a specific function for our psi before we do anything here. But what you can hopefully see is there's going to be a lot of calculus. Again, some derivatives and then some integrals. And because we're actually taking the derivative and then multiplying by its own complex conjugate, this can become a pretty complicated function, complex if you will. And so you need to do some complicated integrals. You can use integral tables. There's uh, a short list of some integrals that come up a lot in the back of the book. Um, but also recognize that there's not that many functional forms per psi that we can introduce at this level of quantum mechanics that really are analytically solvable. So you're not going to see this huge, huge variation in functions since really there's a lot of functions we can plop in that one, won't be normalizable, which we'll talk about more later, and that are going to be really hard to solve by hand. So please be ready to do some intense integration. You can check yourself, maybe using a tool like Wolfram Alpha, but do learn to use integral tables. Do learn to actually use techniques to solve integration. Don't only uh, rely on Wolfram Alpha. Remember to always show your work.